first time I heard about Zero Art Trails was from uh, Jim Crockett, who also was a boat builder. I'd worked in shipyards, and he was building little small boats, and I thought, wow, he can, he can do it up here. That's, for some reason, I can't. <laughs> and he had nothing but good things to say about Sierra Art Trails. I had a hard time staying away from that. He had boats. He needed a little bit of help. He had some problems with me. Couldn't get in the interior of the boat, so I helped him out a little bit when I could when I had time. Kind of sparked the interest, so I started uh, building this boat. Oh, I guess probably 2011. This boat, the original designer was Hershoff, and he was he designed all the America's Cup contenders in the uh, 1800s. This particular design, which was that was featured in the uh, Windboat magazine, was, I think it was mostly because it was he claimed this was his favorite pleasure boat to go sailing in. It's got an unusual rig with a split rig like this. He called it a dandy, uh, the rig, uh, which is how the where you the placement of the masts and the cut of the sails. And that's part of the reason I named the boat Fine and Dandy. And the other reason was because when I bought my my first boat, my big Engelman catch uh, down in Southern California, um, the guy that talked me into buying it uh, had had a stroke. And the only only words I ever heard him say was fine and dandy. Uh, this boat, it's probably, if you could work straight through on it, you could probably build a boat in about eight, nine hundred hours. It's a pretty, uh, pretty complicated boat. It has a lot of planks, 13 planks per side, and it has quite a bit of shape in it. And I enjoy the process of, of uh, the actual shaping and setting up the molds and making the mass. Hollow, the main mast, there's a hollow mast called a bird's mouth a hollow mast. And, uh, so it's always challenging to make these things. You learn some things along the way. Other things were skills that I already picked up in uh, working the shipyard. A lot of the wood is reclaimed wood. The, the oars here and the masts were uh, they're Sitka spruce and they came from the uh, reclaimed lumber yard in North Fork, Crossroads Lumber. And he yeah, just came across a big batch of Sitka spruce from an actually an old uh, military warehouse, and that's the uh, best material to use for masts. Of course, uh, it's very flexible. It's, it's the wood of choice, and so there's parts of the boat are made of that. Parts of it are African mahogany. From I got teak from uh, Mark at Crossroads for the transom, and there's 15 pounds of lead set into that to keep it down. I have another boat in the shop right now that I'm putting a new deck on for a customer. So I do a bit of, I do some repair work when I can uh, get it because I like, I'm pretty passionate about wooden boats. So when I get a hold of one to work on, I, I jump at it. So there is a boat in the shop right now. I get a new deck it's from 1912. I think the boat was built. Uh, the one in the shop. It's a double ender. I like doing furniture projects too. So I've done some dining room tables and chairs. I usually have one of those projects going on in the shop too. You know, I remember before I had my shop, I always loved poking around and checking out other craftsmen shops and seeing how they did things and how they were set up. And on your Sierra Art Trails travels, and if you want to see uh, some wooden boats and you're interested in woodcraft, come by uh, 73 in Leisure Acres.